<coughs> conference. 30 years ago, I made my maiden speech at the SNP conference in Danoon. I attended that conference not just as an SNP delegate, but also as a member of the Timex Strike Committee, the last real mass industrial action on our soil. At that conference, I called for a boycott of all Timex products. In doing so, I was breaking the law as a striker called for a boycott of company products as classified as secondary action. It was my belief in 1993, as it is now in 2023, that if a law is unjust and suppresses the people, then it is the duty of every sovereign citizen to break it. And in 1979, when Thatcher came to power, her number one goal was to break the trade unions and in doing so, break the strength of the workers. First, she took on the miners, and the Labour Party did nothing. Then she took on the printers at Wapping, and the Labour Party did nothing. The destruction of these two unions allowed her to take, take out our energy workers to lay the foundations of privatisation. And then she took out the printers to stop them printing the truth and holding governments to account. And while all this was happening, the Labour Party that was created on the backs of workers stood by and watched. Even when Labour got back into power in 1997, the workers expected the anti-trade union laws to be abolished. But yet again, Labour betrayed them, as Labour always do. Conference, you would think that without kicking the teeth, the trade union leaders would start a campaign against the Labour Party. But no. Instead, many of these trade union leaders went to Downing Street to bend their knees to Blair and ask how far up the greasy pole they can go. That takes me back to Timex strike. It lasted just, over a year, just under a year. And the first politician on that picket line wasn't the two Labour MPs from Dundee. It was Alec Salmon. Because as soon as the result of the ballot was announced, I called Alec and he was up to show solidarity that very afternoon. Good for him. The Labour Party tried many times to get us to give up the fight because their members in the south of England and the city of London were not happy with the solidarity Timex strikers were getting, not just at home, but internationally. Even at the end of the dispute, they said Timex strikers voted to end the strike. That was a lie. The union withdrew support and union funds from the strikers. This led to Jimmy Early becoming the second man in history after Winston Churchill to be chased from the city of Dundee by the women of Dundee. <laughs> The political party of the workers has sold us up too often. Starmer's Labour Party now stands in the political ideology of Thatcherism, and too many of the union leaders bend their knees in the hope that they will jump on the gravy train. Conference, we have gone full circle. The new laws allow the government to ban any workers they wish from striking. So I ask you to remember that if you are banned from withdrawing your labour, then you are no longer an employee. You are a slave to corporate masters. That's where we were before the trade union movement started. And if it was not for our brave forefathers and mothers breaking draconian laws, then we would not have the workers' protections they are trying so desperately to remove from us now. Conference, we need workers' rights enshrined in written constitution so those political parties can no longer push their right-wing corporate slavery on the workers of our nation. Conference, let these words be heard loud and clear from this Albert conference. The workers united will never be defeated. I move this motion. Good morning, Conference. Trade unions are the workers' superhero team. Through collective bargaining, workers can negotiate for better wages, improved working conditions and enhanced benefits. Strength lies in unity. <laughs> unions play a vital role in ensuring that workplaces adhere to safety regulations. They act as a collective voice to demand and enforce measures that protect workers' health and well-being. When individual workers face unfair treatment or unjust dismissal, unions can provide legal support and representation. This is particularly crucial when dealing with powerful employees, employers. Trade unions 
help in addressing issues like discrimination, harassment or policies that negatively impact the workforce. Trade unions work to negotiate and lobby for measures that enhance job security, protecting workers from arbitrary layoffs and outsourcing. They represent the interests of workers in the political arena, influencing policies that affect employment and labour. Trade unions are a vital force in championing the rights and interests of workers and contributing to a fair and just workplace. The ability of workers to, to strike is a fundamental right and a powerful tool. It is, <laughs> it is often used as a last resort when other methods of negotiation and resolution have failed. It is a mechanism that when used responsibly, responsibly contributes to a more equitable and just relationship between workers and management. Strikes are a way for workers to stand up against bullying, unfair treatment, unjust policies or any violation of their rights. The right of a workforce to withdraw their labour is the last resort, but it can force dialogue and negotiation. The disruption caused by a strike creates an urgency for both parties to come to the table and find a resolution. It is no surprise that successive Tory governments have sought to emasculate and destroy the power of trade unions altogether, particularly now that the protections of the EU no longer apply, in effect turning the workforce into indentured slaves. ALBA recognises the right of every worker to defend their wages and working conditions and is committed to ending the corporate slavery introduced by Westminster anti-trade union laws. ALBA recognises the importance of trade unions and the crucial function they serve in society and seeks to enshrine the principles of workers' rights into a written constitution of an independent Scotland. Please support the motion.